Today we are back with the Honda Stream and all those body parts that you see here have to go back on here. Alrighty, if you guys have been following along, you would have seen this bike here go from something that was absolutely dilapidated, rusty and ready for the scrap heap, until this bike here. Something that we rode last episode. But with anything this old, we've had problems. This bike is 43 years old now and it was extremely rare, one year release. So not that many of them. This switch panel, um, Frozen solid, one button works, but the rest of them, no bueno. Lucky, I was able to source this switch one here with the horn working, indicators working, and the lights working. So hopefully we can get this stuff in the bike. Okay guys, before we move on with the build on the Honda Stream, in the last episode, I hinted that I was going to do some modifications to this bike. I left a couple of clues in the video, but I'm not sure how many people picked up on it. Before the end of this video, these wheels here are going to end up on this Honda stream. So make sure you guys tune in to the end. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, and let me know what you think about these fat wheels on that Honda stream. Stay tuned. All right, as what typically happens, we're two minutes in and we have spotted our first issue. So this is the original forward control and this is the pigtails or whatever you want to call them on the electrical harness. But here we have the opposite. This is the new one and we only have two big plugs. Quite the difference. It amazes me. One year bike, only produced for one year, very limited numbers, yet we have such differences in electrical harnesses. Why Honda? Why should you do this? Just so happens that the electrical harness that I replaced in the bike was a direct match for this forward control. So it, the problem was just connecting the harnesses together. No chopping, no soldering whatsoever. And if we turn the key on and we put the indicators on, Hey, look at that. We've got a light here and a light here. The headlights probably won't work because the bike's not started. So we will try to start the bike.
there you go we've got full working controls now everything looks sensational interesting though the little indicators look like they're dual filament and that work as like a park light and when you turn the indicators on they become brighter obviously they're not flashing because i don't have the rear connected yet but that's a bonus we can now start putting all the plastics together and really really put the finishing touches on this bike all right headset together switches working headlights indicators you name it everything is as it should but now we get to build up from the bottom to the top and the first thing that we do is hang these side skirts these interestingly are made of metal and then everything should clip in from the bottom to the top so let's go with the bodywork bike is back together time to test it make sure all those lights in the back work as well we've got a brake light fantastic let's see how we go Right, so this is the first real time that I've rode the Honda Stream and I've got to say it feels kind of normal. I was expecting it to feel very different to this. You definitely know it is different to a normal bike but it really feels planted and after a few laps I didn't even notice that the wheels were different in the rear end. Honda Stream obviously runs, it starts, it stops, lights works, indicators work, and even the horn works. The preservation is pretty much complete. But what about that modification that I hinted at at the end of last episode and at the start of this episode? Well, it all revolves around these wheels I'm sitting on here and a second set of side pods that I bought right here. Now I'm gonna run the footage. I cut down the side pods to make them fit around these wheels and then we're gonna fit it all together 
and see the dream stream all complete at the end. Check it out. Check this out. Look at that. Looking absolutely sensational. Look at this thing. Look how ridiculous it looks. Check out these back wheels. They are so freaking wide. They hang out so far. It's like a drift trike. The thing looks like a steamroller from behind. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's awesome. Exactly the way I envisaged it. Is that a word? One thing left to do. It's time to take the steamroller for a ride. So what do you think of the wide wheels? Are you a fan or would you prefer to leave it stock? Leave a comment and let me know. This bike is absolutely ridiculous with these wide wheels. I reckon out on the streets, you could hit a corner at a decent speed and lean it right over to scrape a knee. It's silly how fun this bike is. Would you ride this bike? Let me know. Guys, that is the Honda Extreme Preservation build complete. All done and dusted, and look at the way it's turned out. It's everything that I wanted, everything that I had envisaged in my mind. Um, this bike was an absolute punish. It turned out to be a whole lot more than what I expected, and I needed a whole lot more parts than I hoped. But look at it, the results speak for themselves. This is not the last time you're gonna see this bike. You will see it again. But for now, like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next video.